election. Elections have consequences. We have the Senate. We have the White House. And we have a phenomenal nominee, respected by all, top, top academic, uh, good in every way, good in every way. In fact, uh, some of her biggest endorsers are very liberal people from Notre Dame and other places. So I think she's going to be fantastic. We have plenty of time. Uh, even if we did it after the election itself. I have a lot of time after the election, as you know. So I think that uh, she will be outstanding. She's going to be uh, as good as anybody that has served on that court. We really feel that. Uh, we have a professor at Notre Dame, highly respected by all, said she's the single greatest student he's ever had. He's been a professor for a long time at a great school. And uh, we just, uh, we won the election, and therefore we have the right to choose her, and very few people knowingly would say otherwise. And by the way, the Democrats, they wouldn't even think about not doing it. If they had, the only difference is they'd try and do it faster. There's no way they would give it up. They had Merritt Garland, but the problem is they didn't have the election. So they were stopped. And probably that would happen in reverse also. Definitely would happen in reverse. So we won the election and we have the right to do it, Chris. The American people have a right to have a say in who this court nominee is. And that say occurs when they vote for a United States senators and when they vote for the president of the United States. They're not going to get that chance now because we're in the middle of an election already. The election has already started. Tens of thousands of people have already voted. And so the thing that should happen is we should wait. We should wait and see what the outcome of this election is. Because that's the only way the American people get to express their view is by who they elect as president and who they elect as vice president. 200,000 dead. As you said, over 7 million infected in the United States. We, in fact, have 5%, 4% of the world's population, 20% of the deaths. 40,000 people a day are contracting COVID. In addition to that, about between 750 and 1,000 people a day are dying. When he was presented with that number, he said, it is what it is. Well, it is what it is because you are who you are. That's why it is. The president has no plan. He hasn't laid out anything. He knew all the way back in February how serious this crisis was. He knew it was a deadly disease. What did he do? He's on tape as acknowledging he knew it. He said he didn't tell us or give people a warning of it because he didn't want to panic the American people. You don't panic. He panicked. In addition to that, what did he do? He went in and he, we were insisting that the Chinese, the, the people we had on the ground in China should be able to go to Wuhan and determine for themselves how dangerous this was. He did not even ask Xi to do that. He told us what a great job she was doing. He said we owe him a debt of gratitude for being so transparent with us. And what did he do then? He then did nothing. He, he waited and waited and waited. He still doesn't have a plan. The country would have been left wide open. Millions of people would have died, not 200,000. And one person is too much. It's China's fault. It should have never happened. They stopped it from going in, but it was China's fault. Many of you, a Democrat governor said, President Trump did a phenomenal job. We worked with the governor. Oh, really? Go take a look. The governor said I did a phenomenal job. Most of them said that. In fact, people that would not be necessarily on my side said that. President Trump did a phenomenal job. We did. We got the gowns. We got the masks. We made the ventilators. You wouldn't have made ventilators. And now we're weeks away from a vaccine.